Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this wonderful Sunday morning. We thank you for your mercies and we thank you for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that we walked in under our own strength. Thank you that you kept the robbers away from our house last night. You kept us safe, Lord God. Safe, sound, and cared for. We bless your holy name. Now, Lord, we gathered collectively to praise and worship and to hear what best saith the Lord. So we ask that you move by your Holy Spirit. Speak a word in this house, O Lord, that will help the greatest to the least of us. Speak a word, hallelujah, that will show us that you really, really care. Thank you for your son who died so many years ago on an old rugged cross on Calvary. Oh God, he stayed up there and he died for the sins of the world. Yes, and we have accepted our redemption through Christ. Yes, so we love you, we praise you, we honor you, and we thank you for your goodness. We clap our hands, Lord, because you've been so good. Oh, how you've been good to me. And I say thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray for our extended families. Pray that you touch, heal, and deliver. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. I am coming to you from the uh, Second Corinthians today. Oh, I feel like worship, but I got to move on. This morning, I want to talk to you about, uh, yes, prophecy again, but we're going into a little bit of a different direction. One key thing I want you to know before we read our scripture, First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 11, uh, uh, Second Corinthians, excuse me. When you give a word to someone, whether you realize that it's prophecy or not, when you give a word, you have to prophesy out of your spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to show you something, and it used to be complicated to me, but it's not complicated anymore. The Bible has a scripture that talks about that the Holy Spirit searches the deep things and makes intercession to God for us. He knows everything about you. Amen. The Holy Spirit knows your ins and your outs, right? And so what the Holy Spirit does in his, his uh, 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 efforts to bring us up is he makes intercession. And he's making intercession to God the Father, right? So the Bible is clear that the mind of God, hear me now, and the mind of the Holy Spirit are in communication. Amen. And so it's from the Holy Spirit who lives within in us, he deals with our spirit. So every good word that you've been given, every unction of the Holy Ghost, every dream that was from the Lord comes to your spirit from the Holy Spirit. It's from that place that you prophesy. It's from that place that you give a word to somebody. Now, the only way that I know to... Uh, give you kind of a sense of what that's like. Have you ever had somebody staring at you across the room and you could feel it? Yeah. Now you didn't see them, but you could sense that somebody was staring at your good looking behind, right? They was looking at you and they was looking too long. Come on, talk to me. I'm trying to help you with this spiritual thing. It's kind of like that. You just sense, hmm, hmm. Have you ever been thinking about an auntie or a cousin and the phone rang and then, oh, I was just thinking about you, girl. I was just, you just was running across my mind. It's kind of like that. But as you mature, you can pick up on what the spirit is saying to your spirit and you can pray that thing. Amen, somebody. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Can I stay here for a second? Elijah. He told Ahab, King Ahab, it's not going to rain. And you know, that's a, a, a highly quoted scripture. God told Elijah it wasn't going to rain for three years, three and a half years. And he told Ahab and Ahab and Jezebel got upset, right? Amen. Amen. That's in 2 Kings. I think 2 Kings or 1 Kings. And so now um, Ahab, Jezebel get upset. But then after the three years is over, God comes back to Elisha and says, hey, go, go, go present yourself before Ahab again. It's going to rain, right? So he's, this is all prophecy. Amen, somebody. 
The other key thing is after Elijah told Ahab, it's going to rain again. Uh, uh, get your chariots together. Go and prepare. Drink wine and have a feast because it's going to rain. Elijah didn't stop. He went back to Mount Carmel. To the, the Bible says to the top of Mount Carmel. And he began to pray. Many of you have had prophetic things said over your life. But the missing piece. The reason that it didn't happen in the time frame that you thought it was supposed. Because prayer has to be applied. Now God spoke to Elijah. Listen to me now. Come, come with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Because God has shifted some things for you. And now you have to walk in them. And I know we're corporate and we're intellectual. I know this. I understand it. You're very reasonable. Somebody say reasonable. You think about things and you lead people and you have to adjust and do various things. But hear me today. God has repositioned some things in your life such that you must walk after the spirit. Don't make him afflict us for us to hear him. Let us hear him in our normal functions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So Elijah had to pray. And hear me now. It didn't happen on the first prayer. First time he prayed, the Bible says he, he knelt down and he put his knee, head in between his knees. So he was praying in a posture and a position that he knew how to get through. Amen, somebody. I had been praying at home, but I didn't get through until I came over here. Positioned to, 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 to hear from the Lord. He prayed the first time and he told his servant, go to, to the edge of the sea and see if you see a cloud. Nothing. You hear what I'm saying? Just like some of us, we pray, ain't nothing happen. I don't feel no unction. I don't feel nothing, actually. It's just like my... He prayed a second time. This is a man that heard the word of the Lord. Sent his servant, ran over there. Ah, I don't hear anything. I don't see nothing. Seven times. He prayed seven times. And the man came back and he says, I see a cloud. The size of a man's fist. And Elijah stopped praying. So what that tells us is, yes, you can have a word of prophecy, but you got to pray until you start seeing the thing coming in here. You start seeing manifestations. You start see, pray until that point. Amen. After you've heard the word from the Lord. Amen. So this morning, I want to uh, continue on here to talk about prophecy has to be from your spirit. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 1. Therefore, seeing we have, and you can put it up, uh, Isaiah, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since we have what? This ministry. Every one of us have a ministry. Each of us. Uh-huh. Whether you're boosting somebody on or whether you're a mother in Zion, you got a ministry. As we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things. Things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. In what? The sight of God. Uh-huh. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Mm. Next verse. Whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but, we, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus' sake. That's good. That's good want to highlight in verse number five, uh, we do not preach ourselves. We don't preach about how we overcome necessarily. We preach the gospel of the kingdom. I'd like to welcome all of those that are on Zoom. Uh, we love you, we appreciate you, and we declare an atmosphere change in your home 
such that you might hear the word as if you were here. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's look at these few five verses now. The first verse says, therefore, since we have this ministry, in other words, we're in this situation together. Mm. Since we are a family, what are we going to do? And since we have received mercy from God, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to lose heart. We're going to encourage one another. That's why the fourth uh, Sunday fellowship is important. Because I need to hear how people are doing. Not from just a passing after service is over, but sit down and talk to me. I really learned something uh, uh, about some things when I sat down last week. Uh, Sister Julie and I had a very good conversation and it put some things in perspective for me, not just concerning her, but concerning the, some things that I wanted to talk to somebody about. Yeah. And this is what the fellowship is about. Amen. So we do not lose heart. Now, what causes a person to lose heart? Sometimes people are left alone or abandoned. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Sometimes life seems to be out of control. Uh-huh. And then sometimes you're grieving a loss. Hmm. Yeah. Some of us have lost our mothers and there's nothing like that. You can't equate that to nothing. There's no, and I had to go through it. I know on Mother's Day, sometimes Sister Max would say, I miss my mama. But I ain't understand. I knew to pray. Come on, I'm not dumb. I knew to uh, undergird and to say, oh, be encouraged, baby. It's all, it's all. I knew to do something. But when I lost mine, whoo, clarity, boom, now I know how to minister. It's weird, if, if, if I can use that word, it's strange. I lost my daddy, yeah, 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 and that, and that hurt because he loved me. But my mama, something about who you come through, and do they, they, it's different. I don't know why, but it's just different. Hello, somebody. So this can cause you to lose heart when you're grieving, when you're hurting. I'll tell you something else that causes you to lose heart when you have a, a physical affliction. <laughs> you show, you go, hey, what am I serving God for if he got healing in his hands and he won't send some to me? Amen. The apostle Paul went through that. I was suffering and I went to the third heaven and I asked him, Lord, lift this thing off of me. He then, then the Lord said, no, my grace. You have to have, hallelujah, somebody lift your hands. God, give us that anointing that goes past the flesh. In the name of Jesus, you on the Zoom, lift your hands. Lord, give us that anointing that goes beyond the flesh. You have to have an anointing on your life that's stronger than the average guy. When you get afflicted in your body, whether it's whatever condition it is, you got to have, hallelujah, a greater anointing to push past my headache, to push past my heart palpitations or my sugar levels or whatever it is. You got to have something down on the inside that connects to God and overrides your flesh. Didn't Jesus say, I'm exceedingly sorrowful unto death. His soul was vexed by the cup that he had to drink, but he was able to push past it. Not my will. Hallelujah. But thy will be done, oh God. Not my way. Lord, I need you. You get afflicted and see if you need, don't need something special. He prayed angels down, y'all. Hallelujah. Sometimes we want to lose heart. We want to give up. But I told you the remnant don't know how to bow. There's something in you that won't quit. Mm. Therefore, since we have this ministry and we have received mercy, hallelujah, which I knew every morning, we do not lose heart. That, may, that means we, we don't allow fear to override our faith. Hey, glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God did not give us the spirit of fear. Uh, because uh, when we pray, the Lord increases our faith. Mm. Jesus spoke a parable to them that men ought to always pray and not to lose heart. 
Luke 18 and 1. And then verse 2, saints of God. It says, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame. You know, I thank God for the ability to override and to get rid of shame in our life. Amen. I know our little natural mind brings up things that we did in our past, things that were uncomfortable, but we have renounced all of that now. And we don't walk in craftiness. That's lies, y'all, for another word for a lie. Uh, nor handle the word of God deceitfully. There's some people that preach to tickle the fancies of people. But the gospel, they used to say when I was coming up in the sanctified church, this is a suffering way. Yeah. Didn't understand it. Didn't, didn't want it either. <laughs> suffering for who? <laughs> Y'all can suffer. I'm going to give me a good job and some money and a nice car. I ain't doing all that. A suffering way. And they weren't talking about material things. Sometimes you can have a pocket full of money, but you don't have what you want because money ain't your issue. Hello, <laughs> somebody. You suffering. Huh? Uh huh. I've been suffering for the last three weeks uh -huh. and it ain't money related. I just been afflicted. <laughs> Can't do what I want to do. Do you not know? Lord, forgive me for this one. But going to a, the bathroom is a whole ordeal when you're on crutches. I know that. I'm on. I was on them. It's a whole Hey, it seems like you just go and go. No, 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 no. You got to watch this foot. And if you move this, hey, it's just a mess. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we renounce the hidden things that used to bring us shame. Mm. And then we manifest the truth. Some of y'all grandmothers, you can't lie now. You got too many looking at you. You got too many watching you. You can't dip out. You can't get too down. So you got to renounce all those other things. And I thank God that he sanctifies our soul also. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And we don't handle this word deceitfully. Don't water it down. Oh, Lord. I, I, I'll just give this as an incident, but it's true. You know how they sometimes make movies off of a true story? Someone very close to me said, I don't like the way you uh, say this or that. Says specifically to the scripture that says, wives must submit. <laughs> I said, well, I don't care if you don't like it or not. It's what it says. And it's not the word submit. It's what the scripture is trying to get at in terms of a functioning uh, marriage and a functioning home. You can't have two heads. That's odd. And if I had another head right here, y'all would run out of here. I ain't going back there. That man got two heads. I can't, I don't know which one is talking and which one is eating. One of my heads is eating and the other one talking. That don't make no sense at all. Can you get, you would run out. So you can't have two heads in the home. I'm sorry. I know we got intellectuals and I know we got strong women and I thank God for them. Yeah, but don't make the world turn you against men. Don't make the world make you lopsided. Uh-uh. A man needs a woman to submit and a woman needs a man to stand up and take charge and shoot the boogeyman if he come in here. Don't have me shoot. No, I can't shoot. I'll shoot you. I'll be the messed up and fell back and shot you and then they take me to jail for killing the husband. But you stand up and be a man. You go out and get a job and stress yourself out to fight, provide for them. Not me. So he, 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 that, that the person got so mad. I said, well, when you get up on yours, you preach how you preach. But the Lord told me to keep the word and, and its meaning the way it is. You got to stand, y'all. You can't use the word of God deceitfully when it fit you. It, it's, it's, this is the word of God. This is our compass and our God. You got to use it. Whether, and then, then, it, then it don't tell the wife to love the husband how you like them apples. It tells the wife to respect the husband. It don't say love. <laughs> hey, come on, talk to me. It don't say, uh, for this cause shall a woman leave her mother and father and cleave to the, the husband. It don't say that. It's the, now, now, which one is greater? I'm supposed to love my wife unto death as Christ. And that, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean I step in when the boogeyman come and take the bullet? Even though she's been raising all kind of saints. Yep. So leave the word, the word. 
Now we know it's a 2,000 translations out there, but the essence, the essence of the word, you can read five different translations and get the essence of it. Amen. Mm. So we, 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 uh, we renounce anything that brings shame to you, your family, or your ministry. They used to teach this. Oh, Lord, you got me old school today. They used to teach, don't let nobody talk about your husband. No, don't, don't, don't. And then don't mention, don't mention nothing about your husband to your in-laws. Because they look at, they jealous anyway. <laughs> they used to, I mean, I mean, they, the pastors used to teach it. Uh, 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 you know, don't, don't let nobody put your, your man down or your wife. No, 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 no. Keep that to yourself. There's some wisdom in that. Because for a long time, if you're talking about your spouse to your, your in-laws, as soon as he do one little thing, they gone crazy. Now, you done forgiven the person. You know, they yelled at you. Say they said a curse word and told you to, uh, you know, kiss their behind or something crazy like that. You done forgave that because he brought you flowers and, and uh, he done done this and that and really made up and did well. He even got your extra gift and bought you some new hair and some new shoes and an outfit and took you out to dinner and remembered Valentine's Day. But your relatives don't know all of that. So they stuck on crazy because you said, <laughs> he told me to do something. We got to hush. Anything that brings shame to you, your family, or your church, we must move away and renounce. I know we got issues in our church, and Lord help us. If the Lord so so fit to bring others, we sure not going to have issues. We, every church has issues, but we don't broadcast it. One of the prophetic words is that we act as one. That means we got to get closer. Not close enough to, to, to be negative or say, oh, well, she really this or that. No, close enough to know how to pray. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then in verse 3, we're moving on. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Now watch me now. The devil does not have an argument with you. It has an, uh, he has an argument with who's inside of you. If you confess your mouth and believe in your heart, then you are saved and the Lord comes in. The enemy is after that that you serve. <laughs> and he will use everything in his power to throw you off. The scripture there says, whose mind the God of this age has blinded. And how does he blind the mind? By making you think of everything else but God. Didn't you hear the opening prayer? We want to get up in God's lap and turn his face so that he, that we have, he knows we have his full attention. And he has our, we have his attention and he has our attention. But it takes something to do this. Because God is a spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why in your doings, in your goings, mingle up your prayers in that thing. Say, Lord, don't let me miss you while you're right here. Don't let me miss what you're doing in my life. I know you love me more than I love myself. Don't let me miss it, God. Hallelujah. Help me to have quiet reflection. Oh, oh. Help me to take a little time, whether it's five minutes, ten minutes, and tell you how much I appreciate you. How to, don't let me be lying on the sick bed to, to, to know how much you love me. Don't let me, Lord, have so much money that I miss the realness of you. Sometimes you got to tell God, I love you. Somebody say, I love you, Lord. Sometimes you got to just let God know. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in me. Mm. Verse 3 says, but even if the gospel is veiled. And y'all know when something is veiled, you can't see it very well. Mm. There's some veiling going on in the earth today. There's a lot of veiling, there's a lot of evil in the earth today. Uh-huh. Yes, we're celebrating uh, the life, the legacy of Queen Elizabeth. That's her name, isn't it? Man, was she a model of service. I think the reason that people 
love her so and are so respectful in this hour is because she put service over her own needs. She put service over her own family. She put service over her own uh, uh, love of horses and all kinds of various things. She served. That's why we love Jesus, because he put others' lives over the lives of himself. Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered, so he served. And we too, hallelujah, we have to have a mind that serves the Lord. And one of the ways that we serve the Lord is knowing that the enemy has blinded some minds. And the only clear way that I can give you an understanding of this, have you ever dealt with a teenager who, who think they in love? Oh, talk to me, baby. Talk to me. <laughs> you, you laugh. Have you ever met, dealt with a young person, 20-ish and under, 20, 20, who, who, who has concepts, but they're just that last little piece <laughs> ain't quite there. That's a veil. Hmm. Have you, hey, oh, Lord, God, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Have you ever met somebody who you talking to and you counseling and you're like, don't wear that. If you wear that, this is going to happen. You're known by your uniform. <laughs> oh, Lord. So uh, 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 that's kind of a veil, but the veil goes a lot deeper. The veil goes a lot deeper. There's people who are caught in um, thinking that doing your own thing is all right, but our steps are ordered by the Lord. There's people that are caught in, well, I don't need God. I, 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 I have, I, I'm young, I need to do it, this thing or that thing. Uh, I don't really need, and then there's grown folks. Uh, well, you, you pray for me. <laughs> no, baby, I'll show you how to pray. It's a veil, and you're a veil breaker. Hmm. You're the one that breaks the veil. Hallelujah. God gives us the power to use choice words in choice seasons to break the things that's on people's life. Hallelujah. You're a, a, a uh, if you will, uh, a God counseling breaker. When you step on the scene as king, priest, and prophet, you bring the glory of God into the situation. You got to know who you are. Hallelujah. You got to know that you're the one that God is looking for and you're the one that brings in the Lord. Uh, you're anointed for that. Somebody say, I'm anointed. You may not feel like you are or think like you are, but you are what God says you are. And if you're saved and you're carrying the testimony of Jesus Christ, then you are a veil breaker. When Jesus died on the cross, the, the temple that had a veil between the holies of the holy was rent in two. That means, hallelujah, that everybody can come to Christ. They're just waiting on somebody like you. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, and when my opportunity comes to break the veil, I don't sugarcoat the gospel and I don't do it out of the flesh, but I do it out of love. And you may not see the results right away, but keep speaking, keep talking. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. The I-N-G, not hear, but hearing. Uh-huh, you got to keep saying it. Yeah, they're not listening right when you say it the first time. But when you keep on, keep on, and keep on saying it. After a while, that person will change. God's word does not go out and return to him void, but it accomplishes, it accomplishes what he sent it for. You just got to be a little bold. You, you're getting older now. You don't need no accolades and you got your own money. So, so bump whoever don't like you. We're a little bit past that kind of thing. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say amen. We're a little bit past, oh, you thought my hair wasn't cute, and it'll be cute tomorrow. We, we, aren't we? Talk to me. We got some seasoning, some maturity. So get a little bold. Listen, you are the, the representative of Christ. I'm preaching to myself, too. 
You are. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you that I'm your representative. I'm your mouthpiece, Lord. Give me boldness and courage to speak. Somebody says, speak, Lord. Speak again through me, Lord. Revi hey, I feel a revival of the spirit. I feel a revival in your heart. I feel a revival that you will speak. You don't have to put nobody down and you don't have to say this and thus and you going to hell, but you do have to tell them your prayer life needs to change. You need to stop drinking so much. You need to stop talking about this and that, not taking away their, 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 their natural things, but we tell them in godly love that there's a better way to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. You got you to gotta talk. Because if you don't, their, their buddies ain't going to say it. They're going to go along. Hey, I feel it. I feel, somebody say, speak, Lord. Oh, there's windows when people can hear. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Verse number uh, four we've dealt with. Whose mind the God of this uh, age has veiled. We got to fight against that. Look at the latter part of verse four. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. What does God call you? What did Jesus say that we are? We are the light of the world. Here it says that in verse four, or is it up here? Okay. It's, Whose mind the God of this age has blinded. Hmm. Who, who do not believe lest they meet you. Come on, put your name in there. Uh, who do not believe lest the light of brings the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. You are that light. Amen. To your children, to your cousins, to each other, to us. Hallelujah. Verse number five. And this is where we're going to park for the next 15 minutes and we'll be through. Hallelujah. For we do not, all you ministers, people who stand behind this pulpit, hear me. Every one of you. There's several ways to preach. There's persuasive preaching. There's instructive preaching. There's inspirational preaching. There's pr prophetic preaching. There's a lot of ways to preach, right? But you can preach from two different places. You can preach from your soul. Mm. And then all your experiences is coming in your head while you ministering. Uh-huh. All of your, you can't talk about marriage because you, you got a divorce. If you're preaching from the soulish realm. Right. Okay, how are you going to say God hates divorce from the soulish realm and you got a divorce? Right. Then your mind will immediately go back and say, oh, you're guilty. Hey, I already know I'm guilty. I know I've been forgiven. Amen. You see what I'm saying? From the soulish realm, if you start preaching, everything you talk about is going to hit you because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you can't preach from the soulish realm, from your experiences and from what you're feeling because you may not feel good that day. So what you're going to tell the people? Oh, this servant, the Lord is just bringing me down. I'm just so tired of coming over here and standing here and trying to preach to y'all because I'm just tired, mother. I'm weary. I'm wounded and worn. I need to be preached to. Hey, hey, what kind of message is that? Do you, uh -uh. you people going to say, uh -uh, I came last Sunday. I ain't coming back. Uh -uh, nah, nah, nah. You ain't going to put that on me. Dumping all that mess. My wife beat me last night. So what? We don't care about that. That's between you and her. She just keep hitting me, throwing shoes at me and stuff like that. So what? But when you speak from your spirit realm, then the Holy Spirit can give the people what they need. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I don't just conquer things. I'm more. I'm more than a conqueror. The Lord is my shepherd. 
and I don't want for nothing, my needs he will supply. And yea, though I get laid out from sickness mm, and have to walk through the valley that looks like death is imminent, he's there with me. Oh, he's in the valley with me. He's in my low place. And after a while, he's the lifter of my head. He will, hallelujah, lift my head back up. He will help me to overcome. He will bring me out of loaded bar. He will be my bright and morning star. And I can follow him. I can follow the Lord until the glory of God hits my life. I can stay in his presence. I can keep a praise on my mouth. Hallelujah. With, with, and let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Not when you're feeling good. Not when you're on high. Not just when you're low. But we praise the Lord every day of our lives. When I'm old, when I'm young, I praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I rear my shoulders back and I stand against evil and I say, for God, I live. I'm trembling, but I still say it. Hallelujah. I got trouble, but I still say it. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to serve him. I'm going all the way. Hallelujah. When you do that, you give the devil a black eye. The blood of Jesus against you, Satan. You're trying to discourage me, but the devil is a lie. You're trying to make me lose down on who I really am. I'm king. I'm priest. I'm prophet. I am the blessings of God to the earth. I am who I am by the grace, by the grace that was applied to your life. Yes, all have sinned, but I'm not in sin because grace has hit my life. Hallelujah. And I've got a testimony. Ha, I got a song to sing that even the angels can't sing. I've been bought by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. I've been washed. Hallelujah. And I'm on my way to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Matter of fact, I'm living out heaven right now. Thank you, Lord. I'm living out heaven right now. I'm not waiting for the battle to be over, but I'm shouting. Oh, I'm glorifying God. I'm thanking the Lord right now. I still got some things that I'm petitioning God for, but I'm thanking him right now. I still got some things that I want him to do, but I'm thanking him right now. I want him to bless my ministry. I want him to bless the inside of me. I want him to bless my idea. I'm thanking him before it happens. I'm thanking him while it's happening, and I'm thanking him after it happens. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I declare that if you go to thanking God for your family and thanking God for your marriage and thanking God that he's allowed you to live this long, life will get better. Your perspective will get better. Your outlook will get better. Your optimism will get better. We got to thank God for what he's already done and he will do more and more and more. But right now, we got to thank him. Don't let the devil trick you into murmuring and complaining. That's his job. And he's on it. But he cannot stop our praise. Hallelujah. He cannot stop me from saying thank you for my little job, Lord. Thank you for my peace of mind, God. Thank you that I have a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you that I can digest what I eat, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Everything ain't going right. I can't run, but I can walk and thank him. How clap your hands, everybody, and give God praise. You that are on the Zoom and tuning in, clap your hands and shake the devil's kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the things you've done and the things that are not yet seen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's the way you break him up. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help me not to point the finger at somebody else. But to give you glory until my perspective changes. Sometimes things don't have to change in others' lives, but they have to change in us. Mm. Hallelujah. I want. Yeah, we're going into the fifth verse, but I want I want I want to say these few, few things to you. I got I got seven little points that I want to show you before I say the last bit on prophesying from the spirit put your hand on your belly 
Jesus prophesied to the woman at the well that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, you know he meant that metaphorically. But in you lies the hope of your community. In you lies the hope of your family. If you take down, ain't nobody going to be right. Hear me now. Yeah, we have to have a special festivity for people to come that you're related to. But if you don't let it flow, ain't nobody going to see it in your family, in your house, in your, in your community, in your workplace. So we pray in the name of Jesus. God flow. You prophesy that out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. And God, we speak to our own belly. <laughs> let it flow in Jesus name. Amen. Give God praise. I want to say something about the purpose of pressure. When you are under pressure, hallelujah, uh, pressure, you can take the scripture down for a minute. Pressure brings you into purpose. The Bible says Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. That's pressure. Pressure allows you to, to, to come into what you're really here for. Mm. And there's all types of pressure. There's, there's, there's pressure from being uh, the head of the house. There's pressure from being the only saved person in the house. There's pressure on your responsibilities. So pressure brings purpose. Now hear me on this. Prophesying or prophecy brings clarity to your purpose. Jesus was born for one reason. That's to go to the cross and to rehang the door to the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Hear me again. Jesus says, I am the door. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas was asking him one day, or not Thomas, but one of the other disciples, said, Lord, we don't know the way. We don't know how to go where you're going. And they, because it was spiritual now. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So when Adam messed up, somebody say, Adam messed up. Mm, give me a little time here. Uh, the door was closed. He got put out of the presence of God. Yeah. Come on, talk to me. Yeah. So that getting into the presence of God is now shut. So that's why the Holy Spirit just came on people and they did great exploits. The word of the God, God came to Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. It didn't indwell. Okay. So Jesus purpose Mm. He, he came through all kinds of prophecy, which clarified his purpose. But his purpose was to rehang the door, the entrance way. That's why it talks about uh, any man that comes in uh, not by this way is wrong. So now we have access back into the presence of God, just like Adam and Eve did. And we have God indwelling in us. The, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Hello, somebody. So the entrance way, don't ever think you're being shortchanged. And if you ever realize how powerful you are, that's why the devil always hinders your prayer. You can be wide awake, just clear. As soon as you start praying. <sighs> <sighs> Soon as you start praying, oh, did I turn the eye off in the kitchen? Soon as you start praying, the thing you couldn't remember, you remember just like, just like that. It's to keep you from knowing who you are. You're one with Christ. Christ lives within. You're a king, a priest, and a prophet. So prophecy brings clarity to purpose. It lets us know what Jesus was doing, why, and then from from the clarity of purpose, we have obedience. Mm -hmm. We obey to fulfill purpose. So the first one is uh, uh, pressure brings you into purpose. The second one is prophecy brings clarity to purpose. Mm. Amen. And then thirdly, obedience causes fulfillment of purpose. Now, from purpose... And the understanding of purpose, I go into peace. When you fully understand something, you're not worried. You ever had a, uh, taken a test in high school or college or even an exam for the job? 
And that when you don't fully understand a piece, you're nervous. How am I going to pass this thing? How am I going to get through it? But when you fully understand, you go into the test like, oh, oh I got that. <laughs> I've been doing that most of my career. I got that. So uh, when you have purpose, you have peace. And this is what I want to say here. So one is pressure brings you into purpose. Two is prophecy brings clarity to purpose. Three, obedience causes fulfillment of purpose. From purpose, we get peace. Now, peace allows quiet reflection of who God is and where he is leading you. Mm. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Why? Because you can't get God in frustration. You can't get God in hurrying. You can't get God when you're in between opinions. But when you are at peace, mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Peace, my peace. My peace I give you, saith the Lord. When you're at peace, you can have quiet reflection of the sovereignty of the omnipresence, of the omnipotence of God. And from that, you can get where he's leading you and your family. Hallelujah. It's not all in the loud preaching and the loud this and hickamasai and speaking in tongues. But in your quiet reflection of who God is. Then you can, and it's not easy to get there. We got a life full of stuff. A life full of uh, doings and goings and hallelujah. So lastly, and I'm concluding with this. For we do, say again. The, the last one, peace allows quiet reflection of who God is and where he is leading you. Now let me close it out with this. And this is for you ministers and prophets and teachers. It says, for we do not preach ourselves, but we preach uh, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now stretch, stretch out your hands this way and say, uh, say, uh, uh. say, uh, uh, uh. now I'm going to try to stretch you a little bit. That's why I had you do that. I don't know. You can put them back. Hallelujah. I want to stretch you with this last piece. Somebody say stretch. Put your arms out once more. Say, uh, 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 uh. Really, I'm supposed to be going like that, but I figured I want to stretch you just a little bit because it says we do not preach ourselves, right? Hmm. But we preach the, lo- the, the light of the knowledge of God. Amen. So the title of this message, Sister Janina, is prophesying from your spirit. When you, when you prophesy or give someone a word from the Lord, uh, number one, you need to be clean eternally. What do I mean by that? Your gift can work if you're unclean, but it will be tainted and not full of the glory of God. So you need to either have repented of things or not be involved in things. And I'm going to leave things to let you put the category. But when you prophesy or give a word from the Lord, internally, you got to be clean. That means that girlfriend that keep up a little mess, but you love her. Or that guy that you're talking to that ain't quite right. You know, he, he you know, mixes in a lot of stuff in the swearing and stuff. And you're having conversations with them, and then you try to go to God or give someone a word. No, 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 no. You need some days off not being involved in that so that your word is clean. The Old Testament, they used to uh, uh, say you have to stay away from a woman for three days. Hello? You can't have any interaction, whether it's your wife or not, you can't have, so that you're clean. Amen? So anytime... I may have to switch. You think I have to switch? Or I'm okay. Anytime. We're good. And you, you can play some soft music so they know I'm just about done. <laughs> Anytime that you prophesy, you got to be clean. In my younger years, listen to me, preachers. 
in my younger years, if I know, not sin, but if I know I wasn't 100%, y'all know what I'm talking about? You ain't going off into sin, but you ain't holy either. I wouldn't lay hands on nobody. Oh, no ways. I'm not going to preach, even if I had to preach. I'm not going to lay hands, because I didn't want that mixture in me. Hear me. I didn't want that mixture in me to be transferred. Amen, somebody. So y'all know what I'm talking about. When you prophesy, make, that's number one. Make sure you're clean inside. Mm. When you prophesy, you need to shut down the soulish realm that is full of preconceived notions and preconceived logic. Oh, it's not going to happen. Even if I say it, 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 oh, Lord, it's not. All of that's got to be shut off. That's number two. When you prophesy or give someone a word of encouragement, shut down what you went through. You know, that, that's, not, that's not the Lord. You went through it because you had to go through it. Amen. And it's made you who you are. But shut that down and let the Holy Spirit speak. The third one is the, one of the most important in America because it's not happening. This one, I want you preachers and you, you folks and anybody that's given a word to the family to hear. When you prophesy, you must not think of what you will, be, will gain by giving the word. Yeah. Our country is full of this. It's, it's demonic. It's cruel. It's, and, and those that do it, I'm not judging them. God will judge. Right. But you can't be thinking about, uh, if I give this word to this person, I'm going to gain influence. I'm gonna, they're going to be endeared to me. Somehow, some way, I'm going to get money for, if I give a good word today in the church, I'm going to switch, Mars. Give a good word today in the church, the people are going to give more. If, I, if I, at the end, if I could just get them riled up uh, through something that I say and get their emotions really stirred, not that uh, that kind of preaching is not good and accurate, and but if your intent is to gain something, oh, I'm going to speak to Julie, and maybe she'll release some, then you automatically are disqualified. You cannot be thinking about, oh, if I give this prophecy, uh, how will I get notoriety? Who will bless my finances? You can't do that. One of the things, I'll say a person, a person who uh, came to our church, one of the things they thank me for more than anything, they said, Pastor Williams, I appreciate that you didn't beg the people for money he told and he was very well off he but he told me to my faith he said i appreciate that you're not like that i'm not like that and i never will be by the grace of god because it's not fruitful that means you gotta lie again that means you gotta jump and hick them and hook them and trick the people up. and i'm like oh that's a lot of energy i don't have that kind so when you <laughs> when you prophesy you can't be trying to endear people to yourself, nor can you be looking for any type of gain. Amen. We do it as in the service of the Lord. Amen. When you prophesy, number four, you should have a storehouse of prayer in your spirit to block the demonic influences. What do I mean by a storehouse? I had to preach at a resurrection life uh, ministry. Mom and I went down there, what was it, July. A month before I went, I started my consecration. That means I didn't look at no, no movies. Uh-uh. Whether they're PG or R, and R well, it didn't matter. I have, to, I have to stop that. I didn't uh, go places that, well, I don't do that anyway, but I started cutting the things that could possibly enter and hinder me demonic things you know sometimes people carry spirits and all this other stuff so i consecrated a whole month so that when i stood up on the platform that the devil could find nothing in me jesus says this the devil's coming but he will find nothing in me and then uh i mentioned this before but i want to give you the scripture please put up romans 8 and 27 
I'll give you this scripture which will help you in your, in your ministry and help you in how you go about doing what it is that God wants you to do. And for those of you that are preaching and teaching and doing Bible studies and leading prayer, uh, in Romans, what, 8? What did I say? Hear me now. Now, listen. He who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Uh, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, I'm going to read this where it makes sense, where it can just be regular English. Now, the Holy Spirit searches the hearts of every person in here, and he knows God's intent for you. He knows the mind of God. Uh huh. And so he makes intercession from what's going on in your life uh, uh, according to the will of God. So that's what that means. That he's making, and so from this place, because the Holy Spirit, which lives in you, knows the mind of God, and the mind of God is where prophecy comes from, mm. thus saith the Lord God, then now you, your spirit and the Holy Spirit can be one so that you can hear what God is doing. Amen. Amen. If we had time, I'd go over that again, but maybe we'll say a few words later. It's from this connection from the Holy Spirit making intercession to God for you, that you should prophesy. Hmm. Amen. When you prophesy, you reveal who Christ is and what his love can do. And when you prophesy, you bring in the glory of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As we mature as a, as a ministry, the Lord will bless us with more and more and more. He's taking care of every financial need. He's taking care of every health need. He's taking care of every relationship need. For indeed, the Lord God loves you with an abiding love. And his love does not wean or waver. But God is a loving God. And his love is shared abroad to us today. So we give him thanks. We give him glory. We give him honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, oh God. We bless you from where you brought us from and where you're bringing us to. We glorify you today, oh God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. Mm, your spirit lives within us. Your spirit makes intercession for us. And we give glory unto your name. Now, God, come in your fullness. Put a seal on this word, O oh Lord. Let it rest in our heart and bring forth fruit, oh God. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, God, we praise your name. Father, look on every person here today and every person that's connected. Moved by your spirit, oh God. We declare a blessing over their life. We declare healing to their body. Healing to their mind. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands, everybody. Mm, stand on your feet. We're about to pray. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a big thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, glory. Hey, glory. Hey, God, we love you. Oh, we love your name, Jesus. At the mention of your name, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that you are the Christ. Mm. So we give you all our worship. We give you all our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mention of your name, every name must bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Cause at the mention of your name, 
at the mention of your name every name is bow every tongue confess that you are you are lord jesus you are lord jesus you are lord oh oh, oh, oh. jesus you are lord oh you are Lord. Jesus, you yes, you are. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, 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 oh. At the mention of your name, at the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord, who said the mention of your name, the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Oh, Jesus, you are, Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, oh, Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you, we praise you, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to receive our morning offering. I want to thank you all in advance who have given during the week. And I ask, Lord God, that you will bless them. And for those of you that have not already given, I'm asking that you will give as unto the Lord. Amen. The way we give is through Cash App and Zelle. Our Cash App number is dollar sign GFCC 777. And our Zelle number is 404-907-8969. I want everyone to give today, you that are on the Zoom and you that are in the sanctuary. I'm asking that everyone give. Thank you so much for your giving. Our church is run from the gifts from the hearts of the people, and we thank you so much. Hallelujah. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Then also it says, bring tithe into the storehouse, that there'll be meat or provision in my house, and prove me now herewith if I won't open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And you shall be a delightsome land. So we thank God for those of you that give. Thank God for our jobs and our employment. Some are, some are on fixed income, but we appreciate what you do. Amen. It's not the amount, it's the heart. So we thank you so much. And I'm praying that God will bless each of us that will be able to give more. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to be blessed, yes, but blessed to be a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. So each of us is giving at this time. Uh, we thank God for you, and we're just about ready to pray. Amen? Amen? Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for these tithes, these gifts and offerings. We pray that they be used for the building of your kingdom, proclamation of the gospel. We pray that kingdom come and that will be done in the earth. And these gifts will help that to manifest. Thank you, Lord, for this Sunday morning worship. We thank you that our hearts are full of joy. Bless now our finances that we may be uh, well, that we may be able to do the things that we need to do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said amen. 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 Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus. Jesus, we call you Jesus. Jesus, we call you Jesus. Jesus, we call you Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, 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 Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, 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 Jesus, you are Lord. Oh. Amen. At this time, Sister Wanda is coming. Good morning, Grace. It's truly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord again. I'm happy to see all of you that are here today. And the ones that are on Zoom, we really appreciate you being with us today. We want to let you know that we see you and we love you. And please continue to come again. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, Grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Grace. Hallelujah. This is Grace News for today, September 11th, 2022. I ask that you all would please stand and join me in the declaration. Okay. 2022 is the year of unusual grace to go forward, excel, and expand. By the special grace of God, I will be promoted and advanced in an unusual manner. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we just, of course, want to let you know that face masks are still optional. And thank you for continuing to keep space while seated in the sanctuary. Amen. amen. We also have Children of Grace every first Sunday, children ages 3 to 12, teens ages 13 to 18. So we encourage you to bring the babies out every first Sunday. Amen. Amen. We also have our Brother to Brother ministry, which will be meeting this Thursday. They meet every third Thursday of the month via Zoom from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We want to turn it over to First Lady. In, hallelujah. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We in September. Amen. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Amen. So on Wednesday, we did um, a teaching on the prophetic word that we received. I'll encourage those of you who could not log on on Wednesday to please talk to Sister D. She will forward you the prophetic word that was spoken to us as grace specifically. From the Bible, you have the book of Isaiah, the book of uh, different prophets. Right. Use that as um, a direct word written. Amen. Through our pastor, with the help of the Holy Spirit, he spoke from the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Not from his soul, but he spoke from the Spirit, the will of God for grace. Amen. And that is what we need to align ourselves with. Take that prophetic word. He asked that, please pray for grace. When you pray for grace, pray what God had already said. Amen. Pray his word for grace. Pray and declare all what he has said. Amen. And prophesy to grace according to the will of God. So please, if you did not receive that email, contact Sister D. Let her forward you that, uh, that, uh, those slides so that we can line up in unity, one spirit, one mind, and one faith. Amen. Amen. Keep going, baby. We just want to remind everyone that for all, all members of leadership, there will be a ministerial meeting today. After the service, we ask that you meet in pastor's study. Amen. Amen. 